in 74 in Bombay on Ram Nomi. Then he was discussing the element of the non-difference between Lord Ramachandra and Krishna. that we have to be careful about making such a distinction. The pastimes are different. The moods are different. But the person is the same. Just like you have the person at, the, at home, the same person goes to the office. So the associates are different. The mood is different. Language may be different. The dress may be different. But it's the same person. So with us, then we have to change the situations. But for Krishna, he doesn't have to change the situations. He can create the situation and stay there eternally. So therefore, Krishna can be at home and at the office at the same time. So <clears throat> Lord Ramachandra is, is Swayam, like Krishna. Prabhupada was explaining that Lord Ramachandra has all the 64 qualities. So he can play the flute, but he doesn't. <laughs> that, <you know. laughs> that, that. So, he saves that for Krishna because in Ayodhya, if you play the flute, okay, it'll be nice, but it won't have the same effect, the same sweetness that it will have in Braja, right? So, in other words, everything is, is a for, uh, uh, defined by the relationship, by the rasa that so Lord Ramachandra Krishna, Ramachandra, Baladev and Shingadev they're all swayam they can, they're all have all 64 qualities and completeness but they're not manifesting them they're only manifesting what is appropriate for the pastime so we see that Krishna then is the full manifestation where the interaction with his internal potency is to the fullest, to the greatest. There's nothing that holds it back. There's nothing that uh, will stand in the way of the relationship, in the way of the but the, being parakya, then there must be the taste also of swakya. So then in a similar form, with all the with manifestation of all the rasas in a full state, then you have Krishna and Dwarka. But there then, you know, he's part of the scene. You know, like in Vrindavan, someone else is the boss, someone else is running the show, and he's there, a very prominent, important personality, but not the main personality. So then for difference of flavor, then you would have Ayodhya, where he is the king, he is the main person. And so, therefore, from the king, the main prominence is that of, in this case, then of maryada, of uh, religiousness, of uh, performing the duties very properly, very uh, correctly. And by performing them very correctly, that gives a, a particular taste, like we see in this world that someone who follows all the rules very nicely or wanting to follow all the, that gives a particular taste because the form then is very obvious. The form and the mood match very well. While in these, well, that gives a particular taste. The form is subtle because obvious. The form and the mood match very well. While in these other forms like in Goloka, it's a little bit more subtle because there sometimes they don't match. Krishna is, you know, here is God. He's the Supreme Lord. And he is uh, interacting with his devotees. But in a more, there's more, uh, how you say, variety of exchanges than you'll find in Vaikuntha. So the... But it will be different than in Goloka, where then there will be contradiction. Krishna is the Supreme Lord, yes, but he's still Ugrasena, the king. Right? Others, Balaram is, you know, is the senior. 
but at the same time as, you know, everybody does what Krishna does. So you get more of a blend, more of the human element comes out of the human contradiction. Well, in Ramachandra, then there's, we don't find so much contradiction. There's one word, you know, there's one action, there's one uh, arrow, whatever he does, then he says that that's what happens because that will give the faith. The populace needs to feel that what the in charge says, the king says, that will happen. So Ramachandra says he's going to do this. It will happen. He will do that. And so that brings out the depth of uh, that um, attention to religion that is very much appreciated. We see that in India then of books that are most popularly discussed you know, in uh, assemblies, in groups of those who are devoted, well, even amongst those who are not devoted so much, is will be Ramayana and Mahabharata. So Mahabharata will be about Krishna and the Pandavas, but Ramayana will be Ramachandra and his pastimes. So we see of this, then, it brings, it, the intensity is brought out by the, uh, the proper, the pr proper for performance of duties, that proper uh, following everything, what the Shastra says and all that. See, so we have to remember, Krishna, he writes the Shastras. Right? But one of his 64 qualities is he follows them. But it will be, the way it will be followed will be very unique in that. It's not something that we can do, right? You know, Krishna... Uh, one must worship, you know, the superiors, or one must worship the demigods. So then, an arrangement is made that uh, Krishna, Radharani, is going to worship the sun god, and so then Krishna comes as dresses up as a pajari, so that this worship is going on. But in this worship of the sun, but the prominence is not the sun at all. The prominence is Radha and Krishna's interactions. But with Lord Ramachandra is that he's doing a particular worship, then that is the prominence. Though we see is like when he worships Lord Shiva before going to uh, Lanka, that then that interaction between the Lord and his devotee, but still that worship, those different things are very prominent. So that gives a very you know good inspiration on how important is uh, the performance of duties. This is for Krishna means, as we were discussing this morning, that in the Vedic culture you have the internal and the external. So the external is the form. Without the form, then um, hmm. would our respected cameraman mind moving to his left about two feet? Because he's standing, means with his camera, because he's standing in front of Sita Devi. Yes, that's good. That's good. That's fine. I'm just trying to bring out the element of that. Okay. So then, form. See, is when you have rasa, you have relationship. So, the, the, ex, uh, the philosophy is going to define the actual position of that relationship. Who is God? Who is his devotees? You know, the position of Krishna and Braj, or the position of Krishna and Ayodhya. Um, it'll define, you know, who is there, what is their particular relationship, and these kind of things. But then... In manifestation, then you're going to have rasa. So in, this, in the relationship itself, the it means actual um, performance of the relationship or interaction of the relationship. Then there must be fullness. Right? So now, when that that fullness, how will you express? Right. Uh, much of the time there's an idea of that uh, the spiritual being different from the material. It's just you sit there and you feel, you experience, you know, you always see, you know, you go down to, we're just watching today, we went to Ban Ganga and took, you know, take a bath. 
And, you know, somebody there just sitting in the, in the water, and, you know, all these kind of different things trying to get. I mean, you're there to take a bath. So, you know, you want to meditate. You know, you do something. So, the idea, you see, you know, it's a, a very common, the Krishna in the cloud, right? Radha and Krishna in the cloud with an Om sign. And, you know, somehow there's, this is the ultimate, but the ultimate's not. The ultimate is those same feelings that you have in your everyday life, you know, that you're walking and the child falls over or, you know, they, they step out of the street, the car comes and these, those intense feelings. But the problem is, is that's about somebody, you know, not somebody, but somebody, right? You know, so is this, a, but, it, but in the spiritual world, that's about Krishna, right? So, you have to express through something. There's no question of expressing relationship not through something. So that means form is very important. But not important to the point where it overshadows what is being expressed. Right? So, <clears throat> in the spiritual world, then, that expression and the mood are non-different. Right? The mood of uh, parental uh, affection, that manifestation as Mother just showed her, that form she takes, the in activity she takes, are non-different than that mood. So there, because everything is transcendental. In the material world, you have the same reflection. Right? You have mother, mother here, and you have the relationship. But the difference is, is being a reflection, even though the feeling is there, the form through which it's manifest is material. And uh, not necessarily it's seen in connection to Krishna. Right? You know, that's a very common mistake, is that the relationships we have in this world, we don't actually understand that the potency that's there is not the dead matter we're dealing with. Why is it every mother has the same feeling towards the child? Why would there be that consistency? Every child looks different. Every mother looks different. The situation that is happening is different. But the feeling is exactly the same. Right? The sitting in a house with a piece of plastic and a tire holding the plastic on and interacting with the babies. Or they're sitting in some fancy... We were just dri when we are driving today. We're driving by all these people living on the street practically. But they're all there with their babies. Right on the road, the evening, you know, like that, with their babies. And then you go another few hundred feet, and then you have these big, huge, high-rise buildings. So, you know, there it's very expensive. They're also sitting there with their babies. So, why is it the same? It's because Krishna's potency. It's Krishna in the form. It's his potency as childness. Right? He is the perfect child, the original child. That potency is what the parent is experiencing. But the illusion is they think it's this body. It's not that body. It's not even that soul. It's Krishna's potency that makes that combination. And that soul wants to taste the parental relationship, so therefore Krishna's potency is there in motherness or fatherness. So that aspect is is actually what's being tasted. So, the Vedas, we'll see, they talk about the external and the internal. Because here, the external is just that. It's just external. It's just a form made out of dead matter. Right? It's not like the spiritual world where the form is transcendental. The form is conscious. Right? The form is the internal potency. So, there, there's no difference between the inside and the outside. You know, like these, you know, so-called scholars like to say, well, you know, there's Krishna and then there's what inside Krishna. You know, there's no difference. So, the form, then, from a general standpoint, is important because you have relationships, you have to express the relationships. But the whole purpose of the Vedas is trying to bring us to the point of understanding the relationship with Godhead. And we're trying to get to that platform of understanding the Supreme Lord. 
and seeing the Lord in everything that we're doing. Therefore, the, in, the external is a medium for expressing our affection for the Lord. So that's why ultimately, so one who understands this, then the rules and regulations are diminished because the form is only a medium for that expression. But we see is that it's not that full taste in that cannot be gotten from that medium. The difficulty is, is that here, that full taste is illusory. As we mentioned, it's actually Krishna that we're tasting. But we think it's not that. So we see is that that then is brought out. That will be a prominence in Lord Ramachandra's pastimes is that emphasis on that form as the medium. Right? So that form is there as the different rules and regulations, the different duties that are there, that are established by the scriptures. So if they're followed properly, the taste is very intense. You don't follow them, the taste is not so intense. Right? Modern man, even though he feels he's superior, but he's only superior in that he's got a, a better phone or a better car. But as far as relationships... Basically, he has nothing. You know, how much, how much rasa can you have with your briefcase? <laughs> you know? Or others appreciating your briefcase. But your briefcase is not you. And even your body is not you. So even things that connect it, you know, you know what I'm saying? It gets farther away. So the Vedic is bring it as close to possible and then switch that to the Lord. So we see in the, in the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra that that forms everything about it, every detail is connected to the Lord. So, you know, his birth, you know, the, the, his growing up, his training, his marriage, you know, his dealings with his mothers, with his father, you know, that submission, his going to the forest, his commitment to his wife, all these different things then we see are all the natural duties that are there described in the scriptures, but here they're all connected to the Lord. And so we can see uh, the Vedic culture being manifest in its perfection and that everything is being done perfectly. At the same time, the purpose of the Vedic culture is everything should be connected to the Lord. And so it's done. That's what gives, that is the, that taste in the Ramayana, why it is, so the kind of emotion that it generates, very deep, very um, intense, right? it, you know, means when you'll see when people are sitting around and um, doing bhajan, they're doing ram bhajan, they're all smiling and all this and that. You know, they get the dolaks and they go and it, that it. But if they're reading Ramayana, it's not that everyone's sitting around with big grins on their face. Because right? the fullness, the intensity, the depth. Like that. Well, in Krishna's pastimes, then it will be sweetness. So it's, it, the emphasis is not as much on the, the following of the rule and that due to the relationship, you're following that rule. But it's more just to the expression of that relationship. So therefore, in Braj, the externals, even though they're the most perfect, they're secondary. Nobody cares. It's like... You know, Krishna's God, okay, you know, he does that in his spare time, who cares? You know, it's kind of like, you know, you know their relationship with him. is that He mentioned before, he was, Maharaj was mentioning the pastime with Suparnika. So, Krishna gets it later for that pastime. One time he's interacting with the gopis. And in that interaction, then naturally, you know, because boys are, um, what do you call it? Like impudent or um, it's another word. It just means that you're active, but you're not controlling it. You're not uh, caring so much. You know, you're just that enthusiasm. You're forming the activity. So, you know, as a young boy, he's he's interacting with the gopis. So naturally, in doing this, in that seeming lack of sensitivity, will generate anger. 
right? That's just the way it is. The boy is not careful how he deals with, with a, a girl. It will generate anger. You know, there's no question of it. So they get angry. And then they start chastising that he actually does not know how to deal with girls. Right? Even though he, is, of course, is dear Lalita, so he's the best. Right? There, you know, there's millions of them there telling him that he's not very good at it. Right? So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a contradiction there. So we can understand he's good, but, you know, this is part of the, the, the interaction is that he has enacted his control of the situation, but then naturally that's going to bring out the ego on the feminine side. So then they'll control the situation. So in here, then they tell him that you don't know how to deal with, with girls properly. And they give us an example. He says, you cut off Suparnika's nose. Right? So here, as we see, is that the Brajabhasis don't see any difference between Lord Ramachandra and Krishna. It's the same person. Just different pastimes. But they themselves are, they particularly find the sweetness of the Braj pastimes. That's their interest. Right? Just like for Hanuman, the, the uh, uh, Mariada pastimes are what's important for him. So they have their taste. You know, just like when we serve Prashad. So many preparations. And everybody takes all the preparations. It's seen. Everybody sees it as one meal. But everybody has something that they like Someone likes the sabji more, someone likes the another preparation more, this, that, whatever it is. So that's according to taste, but it's one meal. So in the same way, Krishna and his pastimes, it's one person, but there's different aspects, so different tastes. So it's not that Brajbasis don't know all these things. It's just that that's not the important, that's not the prominent element. So they see Ramachandra's pastimes as pastimes that Krishna has done. You know, in another situation with other girls, so they're not that interested, right? So, they're saying, you cut off Suparnika's nose. Here's a girl, she's interested in you, she uh, wants to interact, but, you know, how do you respond? You cut off her nose, right? You know, they're, they're leaving aside the point that why did that happen is because of his commitment to Sita Devi, and he's not going to let it. So, but, you know, that's the way it works. You know, you, you have to win the fight. You're not, you know, that's the fight is the taste. It's not a matter of facts and figures, right? It's a matter of the relationship. So, the approach is different. The, the taste is different. So, the devote, for the devotees, they can appreciate all these different pastimes. It's not that only, okay, only Krishna and Braj, only Krishna with the gopis. No, it's a matter of rasa's one thing. It, it, it's one, uh, how you say, substance. It just has different manifestations of it. It means, that, as we mentioned, the external form. But relationship itself, the taste of relationship is one topic. And then there'll be different details. So in this way, then, one is able to appreciate um, how, you know, Krishna comes as, as Ramachandra, how he's performing these, these nice pastimes, how he is um, tasting these different rasas. So, yeah, not to, like Maharaj had mentioned this morning about the element of separation. So Krishna's feeling is tasting separation. That's in Parakya. But Ramachandra is tasting separation in Swakya. As if separation is the highest. Then that would be something to taste. Because in Vaikunti is always with Lakshmi. That's the way it is. That's what makes Vaikunta what it is. It's eternal. They're always together. There's never any separation. Even in other sampradayas, you have the nimbarkas. They'll um, worship Radha and Krishna. It'll even be in uh, Raganuga, like this. It's in Vrindavan. But it's different because it's not Braj, because there's no separation. So that aspect then is, is, is uh, very much appreciated. People don't like the idea of separation. But actually we see is that it's in that separation that the actual feelings for the person is appreciated. 
and how it's brought out. Because in sweetness, niceness, I mean, the interaction, they're always together. That's very good. But that separation is then what makes the coming together more important. So, we see this as a very prominent element in Ramachandra's pastimes. Because they're, not, they're not actually not together that, that long. And so long then they're apart. And then even they come together again. Then again she's sent to the forest. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm not sure if that was not all over the place, but uh, in other words, trying to bring out the appreciation of that there's various kinds of relationships the Lord has with His devotees, and it's just that the difference in the relationships, the taste of those relationships. But it's not that you're dealing with a different person. Like that, does that make sense? So it's not because sometimes devotees are you know, always Ramachandra or it's always Vishnu. Or, no, it's all Krishna. It's just a matter of what's being manifest, how much is being manifest. Okay. Mm-hmm. Something else, Maharaj? Anything we could have brought out or anything we could have. <laughs> Less blab the blab. No, okay. Okay, so then we'll end here. Now we'll get to the main course. Srila Prabhupada ki, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki, Jainitai Gaur Premanandi.